So we're going to build our app using React Native, which allows you to build cross-platform mobile applications using React, which is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So to get started, we're going to the Facebook's uh, React Native homepage and click Get Started to uh, see a Getting Started guide. Um, one of the easiest ways to get started is to use a command line tool called Expo. So we're going to use that. Um, so if you go to the Getting Started guide, you'll see it expects you to have Node 10 LTS or greater installed. So you can click that if you don't already have Node. A lot of developers should already have this installed because it's so common. Uh, but you can download a new version and then make sure you're up to date. Uh, so once that's installed, um, you should be able to type Node-V from the command line and see that you're on a version greater than 10. So I'm already good to go. Um, and then if you go to the command line here, you'll see we have npm install expo CLI. So if you type that, it'll install expo for you and set up all the required dependencies there. So while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and look at the rest of the documentation. Um, so you see once the expo command is installed, you'll have an init, expo init, and you can type the name of your project. And what that's going to do is create a new React Native application in the directory that you type. And then you can go in that directory and when you type npm start, it's going to start this expo console uh, in your web browser right there. And it's going to give you a little QR code so you can scan it and then on your mobile device it'll pull up your application. But also you'll be able to set up uh, an emulator and develop um, on your machine. Uh, if you don't have a device or you don't have iOS for instance, you'll, you'll be able to um, test that with a virtual device. So uh, I just uh, set up Expo, so you see it's already installed now. And so I'm going to go to a projects directory, and then I'm going to use the command they give us uh, to set up a new project. So I'm going to do Expo init. init. And since um, I'm making a new project that's kind of a Robin Hood uh, clone, we're going to do uh, we're going to call it Robin Hacks. And so we're just hacking together our own Robin Hood clone. So I'm going to do Expo init. And then it's going to create a new template. And you see it's giving us um, some options here on the screen, whether we want to have a blank application or um, you know, a basic set of functionality. So I'm going to choose this tabbed application because in my sketch uh, we had uh, some tabs. So I'm going to do tabs. And I'm going to give um, our application a name. So we'll type Robin Hacks here. And it's going to create a project directory. Um, it's going to initialize a repository, and basically everything we need to get started is going to be um, right there in that directory. So I'm going to let that keep going, and then in a second, when it's done, I'm going to start the Expo app, and then we're going to see if we can get this basic application um, running on our device and also be able to do a quick um, edit of that application um, and see it kind of live reload on our uh, device. Okay. So now you can see it's done. So I'm going to change directory into Robin Hacks. I'm going to type npm start. And you're going to see it's going to start up this console. Um, so uh, on the left side here, you can see we have the ability to run on Android device or emulator or run on iOS simulator. So I'm going to use Android for now because some people might be on Windows machines and it's a little easier uh, to get up and running on Android on both, uh, both platforms. Uh, and you see there's this little UPC code. And so what I've done here is my, on my Android device, uh, on the Play Store, um, I installed an app called Expo. And so if you go to the Play Store, um, there's an application. And if you type for Expo, you search for Expo, you'll see an application called Expo. And I'm going to run that application here. And then on the application, you'll see there's this option to scan the QR code. So I'm going to click that. And then it's going to let me take pictures. And so I can go over the QR code that's on my screen here. And what it's going to do, it's going to load the bundle that I just set up. And you should see in a second, it's going to download uh, the source code for our new project. And it's going to run it um, right here on my Pixel 3 device. And in a second, I'm going to show you how to set up a virtual device as well. So now that that's done, you'll see it says get started by opening screen slash homescreen.js, and I should be able to modify the code. So I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code here, and I'm going to open that directory it created. So if I open the directory called Robin Hacks here, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff come up. There's a whole directory structure. You'll see one for assets, components, constants, navigation, screens, and so forth. And you'll see we have a main tab navigator 
and then you see we have an app.js. So on my home screen, it says get started by opening homescreen.js. Um, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to open the screens directory and type home screen, go to homescreens.js. And then I'm going to type something in here instead. Instead of getting started, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new view. And we'll talk about what these components are in a minute. And I'm going to just type hello, uh, Robin Hacks. Okay. And if I type that and I saved it, I don't know if you can see this here, but it was immediately loaded onto my device. So it already says Robin, Robin Hacks here. So it's really neat how uh, easy the setup is because I can just, as I code, see what's happening on the physical device itself or do it on an emulator. And speaking of emulators, uh, just to show this uh, setup, it'll be a little bit easier to see if I show you it on the screen here with this emulator. So I'm gonna talk real quick on how you would get an emulator set up um, on your local machine. So you see here uh, on the screen, I already have this Android device here, but how do you actually get that set up in the first place? So if you go back to the documentation here, uh, you'll see there's a React Native CLI Quick Start, and it has different operating systems and the target OS. I'm gonna click Android. And so there's a few dependencies and I'm not gonna go through all of these steps, but you need to make sure you have Homebrew installed and install the packages that are listed here. So you can do brew install and then uh, install Node, Watchman, OpenJDK. And then you wanna download and install Android Studio. So there's a link here to download Android Studio. Pretty big download. You're gonna download that. Uh, I've already downloaded it and installed it, very easy. And then there's a couple things you're gonna care about. The first is the Android SDK, which is the software development kit. Um, you're gonna to need to install a different SDK by default, and I'm gonna show you that. And then the third thing you're gonna see is um, some environment variables that you need to set, and you're also gonna to need to set up a virtual device. So what does that look like? So if I start Android Studio, here it is started. If you click configure and you go to SDK manager, you see there's these different SDKs you can pick. So there's Android 10 by default, but it also wants you to check Android 9.0 Pi and click OK, and it'll download and install that SDK. You're also gonna to want to use the AVD manager. So this is the Android device manager. And what you can do is create a new virtual device. And I picked a Pixel 3 XL. You can pick whatever device uh, you wanna use for testing, but since I have a Pixel 3, uh, I'm, I'm just using that as my virtual device and you're gonna to wanna to set up that device as well. And then it's gonna ask you a couple of options about its configuration, including the, uh, the API and, um, let's see. So I'm gonna click next. And you see I picked uh, Pi as my system image. And then also you can choose a couple options here. Uh, but the main thing is you wanna pick Pi as your SDK and install Pi 9.0 in your SDK manager and then you should be able to uh, set up a virtual device. And then you can just click the play button here and we'll launch an emulator. And that's basically like an Android device uh, running on your machine. And so since Expo is running, I'm gonna see if I can get this um, new application we just created and say, instead of scanning this QR code, I'm gonna say run on Android device slash emulator. And you see my emulator picks it up and it does the same thing downloads the JavaScript bundle, and it says, hello, Robin Hacks right here. And so to see this development in action, we're gonna make another change, and then I'm gonna change that text and say, welcome to the app, right? And then I'm gonna just delete something. And you'll see I save it, and in real time, you see the application gets updated. One thing I forgot to mention is setting up the environment variables. So in the documentation, there's these export commands here that you need to copy uh, to your profile. So I'm using the bash shell. So if I go to dot bash profile here, you can see I've copied directly from here over to um, this bash profile file. And then if you reload that file with the source command or restart your terminal, you should see those new uh, variables. So if you echo Android home, if it's set up right, you should see this path to the SDK. 
So that's it for getting up and running. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to build the tab navigator at the bottom of the screen. So set up all of our navigation and then hook those up to stub screens that form the layout or skeleton of our application before we fill it in. All right, thanks a lot, that's it. Uh, stay tuned for the next video.